The Fire Within by Krista Lacey. We're on page 319, Kilning Gadzooks. <sighs> Gruffin snorted and pointed his hound like up the stairs. The den, gasped David. Gruffin blew a couple of smoke rings and nodded. He spread his wings and fluttered into the tenant's shoulder. Her, he went, warming David's earlobe. Thanks, David winced and climbed the stairs. As he neared the top, he turned his gaze toward the picture window. A frowning dragon was tapping the bulb of a small thermometer. It heard warm air as the tenant went past. Meanwhile, in the bathroom, the dragon on the tank was blowing a beautiful rose-scented flame. I knew it, muttered David. I knew you were real. Gruffin flicked his tail as if to say, naturally, then heard on the handle of the dragon's den. The door to Liz's studio swung open. David edged inside. The recognition was warm, but not exactly friendly. Claws tightened on every shelf as dragons stretched their necks to peer at the tenant. Some scowled with disapproval. Others whipped their tails. Before David could utter a word of explanation, one of the dragons gave a quiet sniffle. Gadzooks. He was sitting on the potter's wheel. Every pair of violet eyes turned to look at the story-writing dragon. The strange hush fell. The room darkened as the dragons held their breath. David knelt in front of Gadzooks. The dragon had sagged into a doleful heap. His pencil and pad were lying idly at his side. Smudge marks had darkened the bridge of his snout, as if he'd rubbed his eyes with a writing paw. I'm sorry I sent you away, David whispered. Please come back. I love you, really. Gadzooks blew a pitiful wisp of steam. His head lolled forward, and something glittered in the corner of his eye, a tear with a violet flame inside it. There was a sharp intake of breath along the shelves. Gruffin, still sitting on David's shoulder, let out a high-pitched squeak and whipped his book from beneath one wing. On the spine was a grand-sounding title, Guard Dragons, Procedures for Beginners. He flipped through the light with light. He flipped through at lightning speed, stopping at page 97. He blew what appeared to be a toast crumbs off it and wrapped the page hard for David to see. Crying, not recommended for special dragons. Take dragon to safety. Gruffin gave that a scorching check. In the event of a fire tear, catch it. David, remembering the story of Gawain, cupped his hands and caught the tear as it dropped. Dragons everywhere heard with relief. What now, asked David, for this was as far as Liz's story had gone. Guinevere had caught Gawain's fire tear, but what had she done with it? David rolled the tear in the center of his palm. The fire within it flickered and danced, throwing purple patterns all across the ceiling. On the potter's wheel, Gadzook sank into a deep, dark sleep. Gruffin dug a claw into David's shoulder. David looked at the next instruction. Free the fire. He pressed the fire tear with his thumb. The tear spread flat but did not burst. He found a modeling stick and prodded it with that. The tear indented but it still didn't burst. How? asked Gruffin. The guard dragon gave a worried shrug. But the shelves came a deep-seated her of ignorance. No one knew how to free the fire. Then, with a clink, Gadzooks dropped, the scale, dropped a scale, and suddenly Gwilana was in the room. David and the dragons all reared back. A cloud of mist was swirling in the doorway, as if Gwilana had dropped from the clouds. You must join the dragon in water, she cackled, snatching the scale as payment for her wisdom. She touched a grubby finger to David's cheek. A tear welled in the corner of his eye. Gwilana screeched with laughter and disappeared. The tear trickled down David's face, then fell toward the fire tear in his palm. It dropped slowly, floating like a bubble. Inside was an image of conquer. The young squirrel tilted his head. He looked back at David as if he knew they would always be part of each other's lives. His eyes, no longer matted or cut, gave one single appreciative blink. Then the tears came together with a gentle, 
and all that remained was a tiny flame. There was no pain, and the flame did not feel hot. It tingled in a light, refreshingly way, touching every nerve in David's skin. He felt it from his head to the tips of his toes. Dragon fire burning within. Instinctively, he knew he could keep it if he wished. One inward breath would absorb the fire, but he took it. Gadzooks would surely die. You alone can rekindle the spark, Liz had said. The fire belonged to the dragon. David put the flame under the limp green snout, watching it circle the cone-shaped nostrils. For a moment, little happened. The fire dipped and leaned and gave off a, a delicate flicker. Fearing it might go out, David decided to take a chance. Leaning forward, he blew on it, gently, sending it spiraling into the snout. Gadzooks immediately sneezed, but somehow, inward, rather than out. His tail spike twitched, his scales rattled, he shuddered and coughed, a wisp of smoke. His graying eyes turned through green to violet. All around the shelves, dragons flapped for joy. Gadzook's spark was lit. Gruffin did a twirl on David's shoulder and hastily checked his book of procedures. Rekindle Dragon Rekilning strongly advised. Gruffin pointed to instruction five. No weapon, said David, frowning a little. Gruffin snorted and slammed the book shut. He pointed an excited paw at Guinevere. Guinevere's oval eyes slid open. Two rays of violet light poured forth. She stretched her neck and looked down at Gadzooks. Around the room, dragons began to trill. Guinevere opened her snout, her, her stout front paws, and breathed a column of fire. Her. It engulfed Gadzooks in a ring of white light. The dragon twitched and lifted a foot. There was a cackling, crackling noise at his pointy ears rattled. A puff of steam came out of his nose. Then Gawain walked out of the shadows. There were gasps and much bowing of heads on the shelves. Gawain arched his mighty wings, leaned forward and blew a cone of flame. Gadzooks put back his head and basked in it. Within seconds his scales began to lift. His tail curled up. His ridges straightened. The first luminescent flash came back. To his gaze, Gawain roared and blew once more in the shadow. In the window, the little stained glass ornament twirled on its string and clinked against the glass. Orange light flickered around the room. Gadzook shook his head and sat up abruptly. He patted his feet and thumped his tail. His scales clattered like a stack of dominoes. He stretched his neck in a graceful arc and fired off a happy-sounding, her. All better, asked David. Gadzooks gave a grateful nod. Gruffin fluttered off David's shoulder and handed Gadzooks his trusty pencil. What's that? said David, pointing to the pad. There was some sort of tailed off message on it, the last thing Gadzooks had tried to write. Was, David muttered, reading it off. Gadzook shook his head. He licked his pencil and added three letters. Z-L-E. Wuzzle, said David. Gadzook gave a radiant smile. Outside, the first rays of morning broke across a sleepy, wayward crescent. Inside, deep within David's mind, the light of inspiration dawned. Wuzzle, he repeated with a nodding grin. Of course, that's how to end the story. We are now on page 328, the maintain, maintaining the link.